Hey, what's up? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be doing a very overly specific book recommendations kind of video. Because way back in early December of 2020, I posted this thing on my Instagram story that was asking for very, very overly specific book recommendations of very specific things that you're seeking out in books. And I've seen this video kind of going around booktube right now, like it's kind of a popular thing to do, like ask, like asking your followers and then getting those recommended to you in a video. So I'll link some down below of some videos that have inspired me to make this. I thought it would be a pretty cool concept and I thought it was a really unique and interesting way to recommend books. So that's what we're going to do today. And I had so many different recommendations submitted that I might have to do a part two for this eventually. So please let me know if you'd like to see a part two of this because this could be like a video that I do a couple times a year depending on how this goes. But before we do jump into this video, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. No matter what 2021 brings, you can spend it creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes because time is what we make of it. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So I recently just started taking this class called video for Instagram, tell an engaging story in less than a minute. This class is really interesting and it's really unique. I always love taking classes on video editing because as someone who does YouTube, I really enjoy video editing in general and just learning more about it. And she gives a lot of great tips and a lot of really great advice on like different ways that you can tell a story and different ways that you can frame and edit your videos. But if this class doesn't interest you, of course they have classes in many other creative topics like photography, writing, animation, graphic design, pretty much any creative topic that you can think of, it's probably there. For a limited time, make sure you use the link in my description so that you can get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership and you can also explore your creativity. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel and the booktube community. Now without further ado, let's get into the book recs. <laughs> so this very first one is from my friend Marinus and he said, a male male romance where coming out or telling anyone isn't one of the main storylines. And I've got to go with one of my favorite books of all time, We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. This story follows this young boy Henry who's gay and his boyfriend has recently killed himself and then he starts to develop this new romance with this boy Diego. And something I've always loved about We Are the Ants is the fact that we're following following a gay main character, but not once ever is his sexuality kind of brought up and used in the storyline in any way. Like there's never a scene where he's like coming out to his family. There's never a scene where he's getting bullied in school because he's gay. If anything, he's getting bullied in school because they all make fun of him and call him space boy because he is saying he's getting abducted by aliens, but it's never once because he's gay and I just really appreciate that. It's like everyone is just accepting him as he is for being gay and that's just never even brought up. So I've always loved We Are the Ants specifically for this reason as well. My friend Mikay asked for a male male standalone romance where the characters are in their 20s. I have a few different books that I could recommend for this but I think the one I'm going to recommend is Someday Someday by Emma Scott because this book follows these two male characters that develop a romance in their 20s. It's like pretty much exactly what you're looking for. This one is especially beautiful because both of these characters had some really traumatic things happen to them in their lives when they were younger. So they are in their 20s, but they read like they're even older a little bit just because of all the life experience they've been through already up to this point. And this is just one of my favorite romances of all time. So I definitely recommend this one if you're looking for a new male male romance to get into. Next recommendation says same sex enemies to lovers romance. One of my favorite same sex enemies to lovers romances is tell me how you really feel. This one is a female female romance and it's definitely like hate to love vibes. This one's also young adult but something that I really liked about this one too is that these two girls are working together in like a film class like or one of them is working in a film class and then the other one is a cheerleader and she kind of like hires her sort of to be like the lead actress in her movie and I don't know I just had so much fun with this one. The hate to love vibes are so real and I love that it takes place in Los Angeles. It's just a great vibe overall. This next one says books set in New York City and I have so many different books that I could re recommend for this because I personally love books that take place in New York City and that's one of like the number one things that I seek out in books but some of my personal favorite books that take place in New York City and have the most New York City vibes as well in my opinion is most of The Invisible Life of Hattie LaRue. This book doesn't all take place in New York but the parts that do 
wow very new york vibes and then we have a little life by hanya yanagihara we have the butterfly project by emma scott and in five years by rebecca surley this book especially has immaculate new york vibes <laughs> Ooh, the next one says books with a female killer and i had a few different recommendations actually for this of like people saying books with a female serial killer and things like that and the book i need to recommend to you is they never learn oh my gosh go and read this book not only is it a female serial killer but she's also bisexual herself and she has relationships with women in this book. She's a serial killer who's like taking out men who have done horrible things and she's a professor on a college campus so it's just like a whole mix of amazing things that I love and it's one of the only books I've read I think that has a female serial killer. Ooh, this next one says contemporaries where the main character has an interesting job. I think this might depend obviously on what you find to be an interesting job but for me I would say Lucy and Josh they both work for a book publisher and they hating games so like that is a pretty cool job and then in written in the stars our main character l is like she runs like a social media that has to do with astrology and she's like really big into astrology and that's kind of like what she does for her job so i think that's pretty cool and then i don't have the book with me because my mom is reading it but danny from take a hint danny brown she's an english professor so like that's a pretty cool job <laughs> we also have gavin from the bromance book club who is a professional baseball player so like that's a pretty cool job i don't know i guess it just depends on what you find to be a cool job but those are some of mine this next one says enemies to lovers at work having hating game book hangover and another one of my favorite office romances that has like hate to love vibes that i really really loved the first year that i read this is egomaniac by vi keeland and in this romance we're following a divorce attorney and a marriage counselor and they kind of work in the same building so it's kind of funny because you know one of them is trying to save marriages and then one of them is kind of dealing with the aftermath of when they no longer want to be married and it's just really entertaining and they have really great banter and it's really like flirty and kind of provocative in the same way that the hating game is so i really enjoyed this one this next one says a fake relationship which this is one of my personal favorite things to read in a book my obvious like go-to answer for this is the unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren because this is one of my favorite books of all time and it involves kind of like a fake dating fake marriage trope thing but I also recently read The Dating Plan and this one is really great because it involves fake fiancés and fake dating and then also pretty recently Written in the Stars also has fake dating and it's female female so it's fantastic all around but I love all three of these books and they all involve fake dating. All right, this next one says anonymously talking online but acquainted in real life. And two of my favorite books that do that is Top Secret by Serena Bowen and Elle Kennedy because this one follows these two frat brothers who are running to be president of their frat house and they don't know that they're secretly talking to each other online and it's romantic and so cute. And then I also have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. This is another one where the characters are talking to each other online and they're also kind of seeing each other in real life and they don't know that they're talking to each other online because it's like an anonymous thing so both of these books have that i love this trope in both of these books <laughs> this next one is from moon of pages and she's asking for a thriller with a focus on psychology i think two of my favorite thrillers that have like a real focus on psychology are the silent patient because this one is following this guy theo who's a criminal psychotherapist so there is definitely a lot of focus on psychology in this book because we're following this woman in this book who has randomly shot her husband in the face five times and has stopped speaking ever since. Then I also have An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen because we're following this girl Jessica who signs up for this psychology study and they're basically studying different behaviors and like women from certain age groups and stuff and it's just really interesting. We follow a psychologist in this book as well so psychology is definitely a heavy theme in both of these books. Next one says a male male romance that's set in a different time period. I have two answers for this as well. The first one is the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I don't totally know if this is technically set in a different time period or if it's just like Greek mythology so it's not it's not set in our time period though I guess is what I'm trying to say and then I also have the Hearts Invisible Furies by John Boyne following this main character who's gay and he's born in Ireland in the 1950s and it's kind of about like his upbringing and his whole life and both of these books are fabulous and they're both gay and set in a different time period <laughs> next one says books about physical abuse in a relationship and honestly the only one that I can really think of for this is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover this is definitely my favorite book that deals with this subject matter and I'll be honest this subject matter isn't 
something that I read super often in books, but this is definitely one of my all-time favorites. This next one says short, weird, or horror books. And I have two different short, weird horror books that I think are great. Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. It's really freaking short and it's really amazing. And House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman. This one's also really short. Both of them are freaking fantastic and they're both horror-ish. They're just like very creepy and weird and I love them both. This next one says books with inclement weather like snowstorms or hurricanes and especially in mysteries or thrillers. One of the main ones I obviously always recommend for this is No Exit by Taylor Adams because this book is a thriller and it literally takes place during a blizzard and it's all in one night and it's just like the most claustrophobic intense amazing book. But I would also say The Shining for this or like that book oh, An Unwanted Guest by Sherry Lupina. That one also takes place during a snowstorm. Next one says I love a thriller with a double twist like you think the twist is over and then there's another one and I personally think Riley Sager is really great at this and Home Before Dark is one of those books where like you think you've seen the twist and then you think you know the twist and then you see the twist and then there's another twist and another twist and then your brain is just spinning and yeah it's a great time. This next one says horror books that will actually give me nightmares. I would recommend The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. I mean I know we all get nightmares from different things for different reasons, but this is definitely one of the scariest books that I've ever read. And it's one of the only books that I had to like shut off at night because it was freaking me out. Next, I have a slow burn mystery where you actually don't see the twist coming. And I would say Long Bright River by Liz Moore is a very beautiful slow burn mystery. And there's actually a really good twist in this book that I didn't see coming. And this one is, I guess it's described as a thriller, but I would consider this more of like a literary fiction slow burning mystery type of book but either way I love this book. The next one says a tragic romance you know it ends bad when it starts but you also get to see them fall in love and I would just say a little life by Hani Yonagihara. Oh my god this book destroyed me. I think about this book every single day since I read it. Next we have books any genre with really cozy small town vibes and one young adult contemporary that I think has really good cozy small town vibes is You Should See Me in a Crown and then as far as like a horror novel goes with cozy small town vibes, I would say The Bright Lamps by John Fram, because this one takes place in a small town in Texas. And I don't know if it's necessarily cozy, but it's definitely small town vibes. Next we have slashers, groups of friends in an isolated location with a murderer. And that's gotta be clown in a cornfield. <laughs> because I had assumed when I read this book that the clown thing was gonna be supernatural, but no, it's people dressed as clowns. And it's like slasher, like this book is 100% a slasher. Next we have near future tech vibes like the one or black mirror. Well, you already know the one, but do you know the passengers? by John Mars. This is a book I always recommend to people that are looking for something like Black Mirror vibes because it's so Black Mirror vibes because it's like a thriller novel but it's also kind of sci-fi because we're following these people in the future that have self-driving cars and then the self-driving cars kind of turn against them and they're like you're going to die and it locks the doors and it's like really intense and really crazy. And then this next one says horror or thriller books that are set in the summertime. And I think I would have to go with The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager because this one is a thriller that takes place during like a summer camp. So it's very summer vibes, very campy vibes. But then I would also say My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. But it does say on the back here this book packs all the magic of a summer horror flick. So like it is very summer vibes but I don't know if the entire book is set in the summer but I read this in the summer and I just had the best time with it. <laughs> this next one says roommates to lovers which is one of my personal favorite tropes so I really look for this in books as well. My personal favorite book that does this is The Butterfly Project by Emma Scott. These two find themselves happening to be roommates and then they slowly start to develop feels for each other and this is just like one of the most goddamn beautiful romances I've ever read in my whole life. Like I seriously just adore this book so hard. And then Top Secret also kind of does this just because they're both living in a frat house together so they're kind of like roommates but they share like the top floor together so they're definitely kind of roommates in this one. And then of course we have The Roommate <laughs> by Rosie Dannon and this one is also about, you guessed it, roommates. This next one is like my favorite out of all of these different recommendations because it says a book that gives Studio A24 vibes. And if you don't know what that means or anything about A24, A24 is this movie company. They're like a movie production company and they make all of these really either like weird creepy horror movies or they make really beautiful like love stories. They have like so many different types of films. Like some of the movies that it shows as like A24 films is like Midsommar and Hereditary which are like horror movies. But then they also have these beautiful ass movies like Moonlight and like 
It Comes at Night is one of my favorite, eighth grade. It's like a whole bunch of stuff, but I love this concept of like which books give off A24 Studio vibes. And for that, I would have to go with The Death of Vivek OG. I feel like this is one that I could totally see A24 doing something similar to like what they did with Moonlight. Just this like beautiful, slow burning story. And you just, I feel like A24 is really good at character development because they're really like an indie movie production company, you know? So I love in the indie movies when they really focus on the character development and the story. And I feel like they would really do something beautiful with this. And same goes for like with Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. I feel like they would really do something wonderful with this and I think this message is like so important in this book that I would want to see it made into a movie and I would trust A24 to do something fucking beautiful and stunning with this. And I also think, I know this one's probably so random, but there's this book called Where the Forest Meets the Stars and I would love to see A24 do something with this because this one is just like the most coziest vibe of a kind of like sci-fi book where this little girl is claiming that she's from another planet or like another galaxy or something. Yeah, the little girl calls herself Ursa and she claims to have been sent from the stars to witness five miracles on earth. And this book is just so interesting but I can so see this being made into like the most beautiful ass indie movie and I would love to see A24 do something with this story. This next one says thrillers that follow parents like Big Little Lies. I want the tea. That is hilarious. I think a book that reminds me a whole lot of Big Little Lies for some reason is A Good Marriage by Kimberly McCrate. And this one is definitely like a little different because this one is more of a legal crime type of thriller because we're following from a lawyer's point of view who's like working on this case. But then also in alternate chapters, we get to see like the moms and like the moms of all these like young kindergartners and like the suburbs drama and it's very like Big Little Lies vibes to me. So not all of this book feels like Big Little Lies but the scenes that do feel like Big Little Lies are such Big Little Lies energy if you know what I mean. This next one says books that have an inheritance. One of my favorite thrillers that kind of revolve around this inheritance is He Started It by Samantha Downing because this book follows a bunch of these siblings who their grandpa just recently passed away and they're all gonna be having this huge inheritance money coming in, but they have to go on this road trip in order to get the inheritance. And then there's all this drama on the road trip, like somebody's following them and everybody has all these secrets and it's wild. This next one says dual timeline family focused stories like different eras or multi-generational. One of my favorite recent reads that has this for sure is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett because this one follows two twins over like a vast period of their life and it's definitely like multi-generational because we get the story of the sisters but then we also get the story of like their families and in the future and it's just freaking beautiful and stunning. And another book that kind of does a similar thing to this is Miss Everything by Jennifer Weiner. And this book is also like, it follows these two sisters who grew up in like the 1960s, I wanna say. And we just kind of get to follow throughout their lives what happens to them as well. This one's also kind of multi-generational. This next one says mother-daughter relationships. And I have a few different answers for this because I also personally love reading about mother-daughter relationships. They're one of my favorite things. So some of my favorites that I've read about personally are in If Only only I Could Tell You by Hannah Beckerman. I also think Little Women has one of the best mother-daughter relationships that I've ever read about. We also have The Dream Daughter by Diane Chamberlain. This book is such an exceptional story about a mother and daughter and how far a mother would be willing to go to do anything for her daughter. It's exceptional and beautiful. And then also Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. And I feel like this one explores more of like the complications of like a mother and daughter relationship and how you might not always vibe together and click together and how complicated those relationships can be and it's really interesting and really beautiful. This next one says horror or thriller books involving the ocean or sea creatures and I was trying to think like I don't really have any horror recommendations that take place like underwater or in water besides like a house at the bottom of a lake. This one takes place on a lake. I haven't read this book yet but I feel like I should recommend this to you because I feel like this is what you're looking for and it's The Deep by Nick Cutter because this is a horror novel that like takes place under the ocean. There's like this virus that breaks out on the planet, right? It's this strange plague and it says in order to study this phenomenon, a special research lab has been built eight miles under the sea's surface. But then they think there's something lurking at those crushing depths. And oh my god, I haven't read this yet, but I'm so excited to read this and I think this would be a good recommendation for what you're looking for. And then this last one, it says a non-traditional family structure 
example like living with your grandparents or having same-sex parents or something like that which i think is interesting and i don't see a lot of in books but i think that's something that i would love to seek out more in books so if you know of any books and i would love to know two that i could think of is in the book of roomies by christina lauren i can't remember if she lives with her two gay uncles but she has two gay uncles that she works with all the time on her broadway show and like they're like a huge part of her life like they're pretty much parent figures to her in the book the inexplicable logic of my life by benjamin alir signs in this book his dad is a single gay dad so it's like not your traditional family structure i guess in both of these books Ooh, i just thought too in the cabin at the end of the world like we're dealing with these two guys who have an adopted daughter so we're not really following like i guess it's not from the point of view of like a child necessarily but we still have a gay couple in this book with a daughter who they adopted so i guess but like yeah i would love to read more books that have like more non-traditional families like this so if you know of any please let me know all right so well those are all of the different very specific book recommendations that I have for you today. Once again, I had so many of these submitted and I think this would be a fun video to do like every now and then. Like if you guys like seeing a video like this with just kind of like random specific things that you're looking for in books and maybe I can post another story like next month and ask for more recommendations like that you would like to see and we can just do this every once in a while if that's cool. Yeah, that is all for today and if you have any other recommendations that fit these specific book recommendations, then let me know in the comments because I'm sure there will be people searching through the comments trying to find other recommendations for these things if that's what they're into thank you guys so much for watching as always and i will see you very soon with a new video bye